Hello, welcome to this video on preparing your data for deposit from the UMass Chan Medical School Lamar Souter Library. After this video, you should be able to understand the requirements for depositing data in the eScholarship at UMass Chan Repository, create a basic README file for your data, feel prepared to complete the steps of the data deposit process. We hope by the end of this video, you feel fully prepared to have everything ready to deposit your data. To start, we will go through the requirements for depositing your data in the eScholarship at UMass Chan Data Repository. At least one author of the data must be an active UMass Chan researcher with an active UMass Chan email address. The data must be original, meaning it is collected or created from your research effort. The data must be unique, meaning it is new data that hasn't been deposited from a previous research project. The data must not be deposited elsewhere. If you are planning on or required to deposit your data in an additional repository, you cannot deposit the same data in the eScholarship at UMass Chan repository. Finally, your data must be unencrypted and unclassified. This means your data cannot contain any private, confidential, or legally protected information. We encourage you to contact a librarian for assistance in locating a repository which can accept data with a personal identifying information or other confidential information. The eScholarship at UMass Chan Data Repository is an open access repository. This means that all data held in the repository is available for anyone to download and, if they choose to, to reuse the data. You can request an embargo on your data of up to two years, which would prevent the release of your data during the embargo period. This completes the basic requirements you need to know before submitting your data. If your data does not meet these requirements, please do not submit it to the eScholarship at UMass Chan Repository. You can contact the librarians at the Lamar Souter Library for assistance in locating a more appropriate data repository for your data. Now that we have covered the basic requirements of the eScholarship at UMass Chan Data Repository, we will move on to preparing your data. Whenever possible, keep files to one gigabyte or less. File uploads depend on your local internet speed. Though files larger than one gigabyte can be accepted, they can take significantly longer to upload. If you need to upload a larger file, please reach out to eScholarship at umassmed.edu for assistance. You are encouraged to convert all of your files into an open format. This table gives you a brief overview of some common open versions of proprietary software formats. Note the proprietary formats from the Microsoft Office suite. The preferred open format for Excel files is CSV and for Word documents is TXT or PDF format. Please note that the UMass librarians may convert files into an open format if they are submitted in a proprietary format. We encourage you to reach out to a librarian if you need assistance in converting your files into an open format. The data you deposit should be in its final reusable state when it is deposited. Ensure what you are depositing has been deduplicated, normalized, and corrected. You can use a tool like OpenRefine to help with cleaning your data. Remember, the goal is that your data can be reused by you and other researchers on future research projects. Once your data is cleaned and in an open file format, we can now move on to documenting your data with a README file. In addition to having clean data, key to making it reusable 
is to include proper documentation. Readme files are important documents which describe your data. They provide key information about, how your, about your data, how it is organized, and how it was created. You must include a readme file for your data. Readme files are key to making your data reusable by you and other researchers in the future. While you might remember today how your data is organized and what your naming conventions mean, if you revisit your data after a few years, it is less likely you will, you will remember everything. The readme file should save you and others from headaches and wasted time trying to understand your data. You do not have to work from scratch to create your own readme file. A generic template is available on the Lamar Souter Library website, along with the library's research data management materials. It is recommended that you use this generic template, unless your discipline has a preferred template, which includes more detail or metadata. Your README file should contain at least the following items. Creators. This should include the names of all of the primary creators, including the principal investigator or advisor, if applicable, as well as their contact information. Directory of files in the dataset. This should list and define all files included in the dataset. If this information is included in a separate file or in the data file itself, explain where this information can be found. In, this, in the case that the information is contained in a separate file, it should be accessible without specialized software, preferably as a plain text file or CSV file. File naming convention. Describe the structure you used to name your files so that a future user can understand what they contain. This can be combined with the section on your directory of files or described in its own section. Data description defines the variables and abbreviations that are used in your dataset. We will explore this section in more detail shortly. First, let's look at the README file template in more detail. The generic README file template is broken into four sections, general information, data and file overview, data description, and methodological information. Here, you see the first section, general information, where you will include your title, author information, description, restrictions on the data, citation information, and funding information. Next, you have the data file and overview section, where you will include your file directory, file naming convention, and data description or dictionary. Remember, these are key to the future usability of your data, and if any of this information is contained in a separate file, you should include where that information is located in this section. Your data description, also known as data dictionary or codebook, is one of the most important parts of the README file. It contains key information for each of the variables in your data, including variable name, variable meaning, variable units, variable format, permissible values, relationships with other variables, null value indicator. You should also note any known issues with the data, for example, any systematic errors or missing values, as well as anything else someone needs to know to understand the data. This information can be contained in the README file template or in a separate file. If in a separate file, indicate where this information is kept and ensure it is in a plain text or CSV format. Here is a very brief, simple example of what a data dictionary might look like. In this simple example, you can see three variables, their descriptions, applicable units, formats, and permissible values. For more complex data sets made of multiple data files, you should also indicate which data files the variables belong to. Here, you see the third section of the generic template, the data description section. You should describe the data for each file in your data set. Again, 
if this information is stored elsewhere, list here where that data description can be found. If applicable, your README file should also contain additional information that may be important to understand your data. This may include special software used to create the data or needed to access the data, specific equipment used to generate the data, and if relevant, the date and or times data was collected. The goal is to ensure future researchers, including yourself, can fully understand your data. Do not assume that something will be obvious. If there is any other information that is relevant to accurately describe and to use your data, be sure to include it in your README file. Here you see the methodological information section where you will add the additional information necessary for your data set, like the software or equipment needed to view or use the data, and any other important information not covered by a previous section of the README file. We have now covered all of the information on creating a README file. Now that your data is cleaned and your README files are ready, we will review the information you need to have handy to easily submit your deposit. It is a good idea to gather all of the information you need for the submission form prior to starting. Here, we will outline the information you need to complete the submission form. The following items are required on the submission form when you deposit your data in the eScholarship at UMass Chan repository authors, UMass Chan affiliation, title of your dataset, publication date of your dataset, the document type for your file upload, the description or abstract for your data. The following items can be included on your submission form. Author ORCID numbers are strongly recommended. ORCID numbers help link all of your published work together and avoid confusion between authors with similar or the same name. For more information about setting up an ORCID account, please reach out to the librarians at the Lamar Souter Library. Keywords, while not required, are also strongly recommended as they make your data more discoverable in the eScholarship at UMass Chan repository. Related resources. Here is where you should put any related published articles or other related data sets to your data. Funding. You can list the funder or sponsor, as well as grant numbers, along with the initials of the authors who received them for this data set. Notes. The notes section can include any additional information you want to include with your data. This section will appear publicly on the repository website, so keep in mind when completing this section. Embargo date and embargo reason. If you are requesting an embargo, you will need to select the date you would like to release your data from embargo, as well as the reason for your embargo. This completes the information you need to have ready for your data deposit submission form. Congratulations, you are now ready to submit your data to the eScholarship at UMass Chan repository. Thank you for watching this video on preparing your data for deposit. If you have any additional questions about depositing your research data or other questions about eScholarship at UMass Chan Repository, please reach out to eScholarship at umassmed.edu or click on the Ask a Librarian button on the library website. Thank you.